are currently retired, right? Uh, yeah, that's true. Why did you retire? Uh, I, I've been taking photos for over 15 plus years at ringside. And I just, when COVID hit, and I've been kind of thinking about stopping before that. Mm-hmm. But uh, I just thought it was a good time. To yeah. End. I've done everything that I wanted to do uh, with wrestling. Um, got you know photos published. That was my main goal. So exactly. When did you get uh, your first picture published? It was, I believe, the magazine maybe came out in two thousand four, early two thousand four. It was okay. from an MPW show up in Maple Grove, mm-hmm. and the photo was of uh, Sumi Sakai and Ron Maru. Sumi Sakai was. I, believe the first ROH okay. women's champion a few years back. Um, but they okay, posted a, well. <laughs> a, yeah they, they uh they published a full page photo of her in the back. I can't remember if it was in Pro Wrestling Illustrated or the wrestler inside wrestling. I can't remember. Um mm-hmm. but then they did a whole article on her and so they bought a bunch of photos from that weekend. MPW had a uh, MPW Invitational, where they brought Sky Day, a uh, guy who trained with Turioman, uh, is Luchador, mm-hmm. and he came out and started a bunch of guys from Chikara, and okay, yep. as well as uh, American Gigolo and Ron Mar- Ran Maru and Sumi Sky, and so they had a bunch of uh, Chikara guys out there. Chris Hero, uh, Eddie Kingston was there. Um, who else was there? Icarus. And oh, there's the post right there. I'm looking at. Um, Just read right off of there. It's like a promo. yeah. Uh, Eddie Kingston's partner was supposed to be there, but he didn't show up. Uh, Ken Anderson and Sean Devari were also on that show uh, that weekend. Well, what's it like to be around all those talents as a photographer? Because like you weigh 160 pounds, you're a regular <laughs> sized person. You know what I mean? Like uh huh. You you didn't spend all that time in the gym or. Well, that's the main reason why I became a photographer, because I wasn't getting in okay. the ring. Although after when I started, I noticed a lot of the guys were actually my size. So yeah, you know, especially now I feel like it's changing. Yeah, uh, even back then, you know, fifteen uh, or more years ago, because um, when I actually started uh, taking photos, it was uh, nineteen ninety three. Uh, I was shooting photos monthly uh, for that year at Ropers and Fridley also known as, um, oh, what else was it known? George's in Fridley with uh, okay. Eddie Sharkey's Pro Wrestling in America. And the big names at that time were Lightning Kid and uh, Jerry Lynn. So, okay. uh, but, you know, wow. Lightning Kid was so the smallest like, guy at that time. That That's crazy to think that that was so long ago. Uh-huh. And, like, that's how you got started that. That's yeah. really lucky, I feel like, because those are like golden era moments where people look back on it, where even if the quality isn't there, it's like 480 on YouTube, people will still go watch their matches at like the American Indian Center and other it, stuff Exactly. Like that. I, I went to that show. Uh, I tried to take photos there, but there was already so many other photographers and I was quite new at the time. So mm-hmm. I just paid for a ticket and uh, sat in the last row and watched Lightning Kid versus Sabu. Which was incredible, wow. but you want you look back on that today, and you know it's not as good as what both would have done later. But uh, it was an incredible show uh, there at the American Indian Center uh, that was promoted by Sean Waltman, and uh, also there was Mister uh, Mister Saido, uh, <laughs> Terry Funk versus Hawk. That was a crazy match. They're all over the place. Um, who else? I think uh, Nails. From a WWE. Oh, well, your memory there. is really good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it was an incredible no show. No bumps or anything, huh? Yeah, that's insane. Uh, I, well, remember I, I, I could have been, been the uh, I could have been the guy who played the music, who put the cassette tape into the into the boombox, and played the wow. entrance music. But I passed on that's that because so I bought a ticket, and I probably would have been thrown on my uh, thrown onto my chair by Terry Funk. <laughs> well, that's a memory. You could have been a part yeah. of the picture instead of taking the picture. Uh-huh. Yeah, so exactly. At, at what point can people start asking for money to take pictures? Because in my head, I see photographers all the time, and I'm like, I don't know if they're getting paid. I don't know if it's rude to ask if they're getting paid, but they drove three hours to be here. Mm-hmm. So hopefully someone got paid. 
Uh, I think if you think your work's good enough, it should be paid for. Just as, sure. you know, same with wrestlers. Because there are a lot of wrestlers that will go out there and perform for nothing. Yeah. As I'm sure you've you've heard of. And, and have done maybe a little bit. <laughs> maybe, yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> sure. It's always nice to get paid. But if you feel your work's good enough and it should be paid for, then... I think a photographer could ask for money. So they don't have like a photography school for pro wrestling, right? So you have to go to like yeah, a not the same as like a and... training camp. Yeah, no, you can't be like okay, I'm certified trained by the academy. I can go take pictures now. Mm-hmm. What did you have to do to be able to actually get started to get into the business? Uh, I brought a camera. I brought a camera to a show at uh, Ropers and Fridley, and the guy That's I was it? there with, um, he was my manager. I worked for a place called Shinders back oh, in those days. You worked there. Which yeah. one? Yeah, uh, I worked actually. I started at the Blaine store, then I went to Roseville, and then finished off in Maple Grove. My dad and I would always go to the one downtown, so we would just take oh, sure. seventeen. Right at the corner of our house, and then go down there, get a pack, take the bus right back. It was, it's like one of the like the best memories I have of like growing up is opening cards. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's crazy. I, I actually did that before I started working there. I'd take the bus after school and go down to downtown Minneapolis to Shinders, uh, look at the wrestling magazines there, or the comic books, or sports cards. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, so yeah, the the manager uh, there at the Blaine store, he would go to the matches, so he started taking me with. And I brought a camera one time, and he's talking to the photographer there, Mark Peterson. And Mark sees my camera and says, "Hey, would you like to take some ringside photos?" And I said, uh, "Hell yeah!" So <laughs> I didn't have a very good camera at that time, so I went and bought one. Mm-hmm. Same kind of camera he had. It was a Canon Rebel uh, film camera, of course, back in that time, and. <laughs> I went to the next show and he brought me ringside. And for context, how much did that camera cost at the time? Uh, it's around three hundred, I think, for so, camera and, and lens or uh, and flash. That, even for back then, I feel like that would be a lot spent on a camera. Like now, that'd be comparable to like a, a seven hundred dollar camera, maybe. Yeah, yeah, because a lot of and people can buy the bad. pretty good digital camera for six, seven hundred dollars, or even better for you know a thousand. So, have you tried uh, taking pictures with your phone at a show? Every once in a while, I'll take it out, just take a quick shot, and then post it to media or something like that. But just to try, uh, it's not good quality. No promo pictures. Yeah, it wouldn't be anything moving, no action. So, what's the difference? The difference of the phone is compared to digital Mm -hmm. uh, or a DSLR camera. you, you can't really catch the action with the uh, with the phone camera, so they just can't keep up. No, no, yeah, they can't keep up. Uh, they, they don't have enough. So what's you know, the fast enough shutter for speed? Like, um, an iPhone. I'm not really sure. I don't have an iPhone, so I don't know about that. But no, I mean, uh, I just used it so the kids would understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it. it and because also I, the quality of the images is supposed to be really good. I mean, no, it uh, doesn't seem I was, very consistent. Yeah. I was at the AEW event uh, at the Target Center last week or two weekends ago. Um, and I was, you know, mm-hmm. took a couple shots with my camera or my phone and um, they're, they're crap photos. Uh, but I was seeing some people in front of me. That, and I'm you're like, savvy wow, and that camera's much better. Lighting. Yeah, but you don't have that much control with the the phone. Real picture with your cameras. Yeah, they're looking good from being as far back. Pictures with my phone, but it it's really hard to like get good pictures and adjusting the lighting. Like Mm -hmm. it just doesn't seem like it's very viable. Even though the the phone companies say that the camera has this high quality of recording or of uh, lighting, like. It doesn't take into consideration that sports photography is an entirely different animal and it doesn't have the best lighting everywhere. 
Exactly. So yeah, you're not not going to get great photos with a uh, phone camera. But I mean, yeah, I don't understand people taking a lot of pictures with them at events because number one, you paid for the show, so enjoy it. But you yeah. want to take a couple shots to say, "Hey, I was here." Cool, but it's not yeah, going to be great for sure. I've I've taken like videos on Snapchat to send it, and then you look at the camera quality, and you're like, "Oh, okay." So someone made an etch sketch and then yeah, tried to draw exactly. out the wrestling ring or something. Mm -hmm. Can't even see anything. Yep. Yeah, it's not going to be good. So when when you're looking at cameras, what are kind of your go tos? I have to have this, and I don't want this because now you you have your choice of cameras. Like you spent all your money on all these kinds of different cameras. What do you usually can you hear me? Uh, well, you froze up for a moment. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh huh. Yep. I okay, can hear you awesome. now. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, because I blinked out on my screen and then you blinked out for a second. Okay. Okay. Hopefully that's the last legs. one. Okay. Cool. Good. <laughs> yeah. Good. Okay. Sweet. Awesome. Okay. So when <laughs> you're frozen again, you're choosing a camera. How do you make your choices? Well, I originally had a Canon. So, you know, that's what the uh, photographer I was with or started with I uh, had. So that's what I went with. And you know, where'd you go? You're gone. But so, yeah, I uh, started with Canon, and that's what I stuck with. So I'd always look at the new Canon stuff. I didn't want to really switch. You buy some lenses, so, you you know, you already got invested in different lenses for your camera. And um, stick with that. Hey, it's just me here now. Take a look. It's back here. I got a photo of uh, Great Sasuke from Japan here. It's a show I went to in uh, Chiba, Japan, Blue Field. Are you back? Are you back? Wayne, I should just let you do your own podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'd I fill the uh, so much. The, uh, <laughs> the what is that called? The uh, blank air, dark air, something like dead that. Air. Dead, yeah, yeah, dead air. Like yeah. Mm hmm. Okay, so we were somewhere. So yeah, so this is like one cameras of my... is, is kind of a brand, you know. I started with Canon, so I stuck with Canon. A lot of people use other, you know, Nikon, mm -hmm. Sony. People have good experience with those other brands. It's, it's just like cars. Uh, you know, you like one car brand, you're gonna stick with that. So yeah, I feel like once I get to know something, I stay with it because I'm not gonna switch mm -hmm. to an iPhone because I don't know how to use the tabs. I don't know how to use the apps. But yeah, it'll take me like a month to learn it and it'll be annoying and I don't want to deal with it. So I'm going to stick with my my uh, my Mac or my PC and my mm -hmm. Samsung Galaxy phone. It's it's nice. I'm familiar. Yeah, you, you stick with what you know. Forward. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So how did you start to get you? You referred to them as like not gigs, but the way you referred to them was. You were given an assignment by PWI. How oh yeah, okay. Did you get an assignment from PWI. Um, well, so I tried, you know, back when I started in '93, I tried uh, sending photos to get published, and I was contacted by by Bill Apter, who at the time was a senior managing editor, and um, you know, there's nothing that they could use that I sent them because mm -hmm. um, it's all based on what they need for articles that they're writing. Uh, or stories. And mm -hmm. so I, I stopped after a year, came back when digital came in. I'm like, oh, hey, this is cool. Because the main reason why I stopped back when I did is because it was expensive. Getting uh, film processed, uh, buying film all the time. Um, so when digital came around, I'm like, I'll get back into it. And before that, I actually went to school for photography at Hennepin Tech with a degree okay. in commercial photography. So after I quit, I said, oh, I want to, you know, get to learn a little bit more. Um, 
And so that MPW Impact Invitational, or sorry, MPW Invitational Weekend, confusing with NIW's Impact Invitational. Um, I sent in photos before that to PWI of Ken Anderson, Sean Davari, and Austin Aries, thinking they were up and coming wrestlers and maybe they'd, you know, use some photos of them. Uh, maybe I sent them to the wrong person. And then the next time I sent in photos from that uh, MPW Invitational hello? with, uh, hello, still here. Did I freeze? I must have froze. Did I think you froze. You froze. Did you fall asleep? Hmm. Uh, must have been my story. Okay. So anyhow, um, I sent in those That's photos from that thing. weekend of all those wrestlers I mentioned earlier. And mm -hmm. uh, Brandy Makowitz was the uh, managing editor at the time. And she said, oh, okay, I really like your stuff. Great. We're going to use some of it. So she bought a bunch. And that event was in September of 2003. And Ring of Honor was coming in April of 2004. So I contacted her and said, hey, Ring of Honor is coming here. And she's like, great. Ricky Steamboat's going to be there. We need interview photos for him. Because they did just did an interview, but they needed, you know, the typical, hey, I'm talking, you know, answering these questions for the interview. So I sat down with Ricky Steamboat before the ROH event. And that was my assignment there was to shoot the interview fo uh, photos of Ricky Steamboat. And he sat down in a chair, did all these movements, hand gestures and all this. And uh, he was awesome to work with. And it was a thrill to work with Ricky Steamboat. Uh, great wrestler. And then I uh, sent in those photos and um, the tweet that you sent out was from that event as well, where Ricky Steamboat was the uh, special guest referee for CM Punk versus Daniel Bryan, uh, which I believe is okay. my most iconic photo because it's been seen everywhere. Yeah, it's it's not necessarily even like, it, I don't think it's your most iconic photo. I think it's the most iconic photo in independent wrestling history. And I don't want to like, oh, I'm so smart, but like for all the people that know of how is this working? One sec. I'm gonna try to pull it up right now. All right. I had it before, but it um I was being silly now. There we go. So for anyone that knows independent wrestling or anything like that, it it pretty much would look like this picture, I feel like. This is what uh, independent wrestling is, is this right here. Yeah, dark arena cm punk daniel bryan or brian danielson at the time there um shaking hands ring of honor style code of honor and that wasn't even the photo you that get was more the lucky. one that became the meme um because the one that's in that meme has ricky steamboat who you can see there uh behind uh mm -hmm. daniel um brian daniel yeah he's right in the, in the middle of them both Team. Yeah, yep, there he is. So, um, and at one point, uh, there's another, the Ring of Honor photographer, uh, Mary Kay, Kate, uh, she actually thought that was her photo that was being used in that meme because she was probably right next to me. Uh -huh. But I know it was from mine that was sold to uh, PWI. And those are the ones that. How do you distinguish between up. someone else's pictures and your own? Well, I go back and look at, on my uh, hard drive <laughs> and be like, but yep, I mean, there's like this lineup. much and then there's that much difference. Well, you'd be able to tell if, cause okay. I mean, she wouldn't be that close to my camera mm -hmm. to know that it's a different, that she would have a different shot than what was printed there. Um, cause the one that was used for the meme was the one that showed up on, uh, WWE's website. So it wasn't okay, printed. So that was the one. Yeah. Uh, because I think it was around WrestleMania time. I think those two were going to WrestleMania. And uh, WWE got photos from Pro Wrestling Illustrated. And they were just said courtesy uh, PWI uh, because they actually have the rights to those photos. They, they uh, bought out the copyright for that. Yeah. When they, That's smart. They, they did like a full buyout for that show. So the photos from that show, I don't own the rights to them. But oh. these other ones here... I do have the rest too. Because this one, I'm trying, I had it a little bit different, but this one is the thumbnail for the match that they had. Um, 
that might have been either taken from the video or who knows, maybe that's one of their photographers because they had two at the ringside for that show. Because it kind of looks and like Kate. It, it looks like a thumbnail that was taken just directly, like a yeah, screenshot that's probably of right the from match. the video. Yeah, probably right from the video. Uh, Wade Keller uh, from Pro and Torch is also ringside there for that event. So what's it like to be around the figures that like have essentially made wrestling wrestling, if that makes sense? Uh, which figures would be talking about? Just like Ricky Steamboat? All of them. Literally all of them. Yeah. Like, you uh, haven't yeah, there's, there's an awestruck moment. People. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, I'm you know, at ringside. And there's Shawn Michaels and Triple H in the ring. So you can pull that one up there. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, that was my first WWE show that I got to shoot down in Rochester. And my main goal was getting a shot of uh, DX there so they could be on the cover. I don't think I knew it at the time, though. Uh, I think Stu Sachs, the publisher at the time, you know, I don't know if he told me I should try to get a shot of them or not, but uh, it was a rare appearance for a house show. For those guys mm. to be at a house show and so the next morning i emailed the photos uh from those two uh to Stu, and that was my first cover photo so are three. you allowed to disclose the amount uh yeah i could but i'm not gonna say it but i'll say no, it's indie pay it's indie pay okay because i was gonna ask <laughs> yeah. if it's sustainable I can to say make that, a living um no uh not for photos just through Pros Illustrated and probably not through photos of, you know, all of wrestling, unless you're being paid by WWE or Mm -hmm. now maybe all, all elite uh, AEW. Yeah. I I don't know, you know, how they're paying their photographers. They had a big crew at uh, target center. I saw a photo of all their uh, photographers. They had photographers at the hard cam, around ringside, uh, roving backstage, around the crowd. I think they had at least six or seven photographers there for that event. It's kind of like that WrestleMania with uh, Diesel and Shawn Michaels where they're just everywhere almost to an extent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because there was a time when there were so many photographers around ringside at WWE shows, but uh, at some point they decided, okay, no more. It's just uh, WWE photographers at ringside, and you could rarely see them. They did such a good job of staying out of the camera. So they might be in the corner, but uh, yeah, you'd rarely see the WWE's photographers. Uh, but otherwise, so, you could spot uh, George Napolitano, who's a longtime photographer for the magazines. He's also worked with WWE a lot. Uh, maybe Bill Apter would be a ringside uh, or a bunch of other Japanese photographers. You look back at some of those old WrestleManias, and uh, they're all around ringside there. So when you go to events for like WWE and stuff like that, how do you get access? Because getting access to being behind the scenes at WWE doesn't seem like something that just, oh yeah, I applied for it. And then I showed up and they said, yeah, you're fine. Yeah. Uh, it's all through uh, Pro Wrestling Illustrated. You know, I'd say, hey, uh, okay, so WWE's coming like, to town. Like, uh, an agreement. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, also there was a time when WWE said, you know, no outside photographers at all. So I don't know how the mm-hmm. magazines got any other photos of them, but um, I, d- I never thought I would be able to shoot them. Cause when Brandy was my contact there, um, she, I said, Hey, can I shoot a WWE show? And she's like, <laughs> I'm not even on the list of photographers for that. So I'm wow. like, okay, I guess uh, I'll never be doing that. And then Brandy left. And then my contact was Stu uh, Sachs, the uh, publisher there. And I saw somebody else who roughly started about the same time as I did as he had WWE access. So I said, Hey, Stu, uh, WWE's coming to town here in my area. Can I go? And he said, let me check. And he said, sure. Uh, you're in. So I got to go to that Rochester event. I've also shot the Mankato arena, uh, mm-hmm. once I think I've done Rochester twice and then also target center. Yeah, it's so all ringside. What is, do they give you guys like a call time or is that a weird thing to ask? Uh, <laughs> no, it's it's like when doors open. I think there's a few times I was let in a little bit early before the fans mm-hmm. were let in. It kind of all depended on who else was 
uh, my contact there, which is actually their head of security. Uh, you've been to okay. shows and you've seen maybe a guy who looks like who's always down around ringside and looks to be the guy in charge at a house show. Um, so he'd be my contact. And once in a while I got to meet maybe the producer of the show, uh, mm -hmm. like Arn Anderson. I got to meet him. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Devon Dudley got to meet him, uh, before the show. And they'd maybe give me a little instruction of, Hey, this is what's going to happen. This is, you know, this type of match is going on. Uh, so just be careful during that, uh, like CM Punk and, uh, John Cena had a kind of a street fight match at target center. So they're going to yeah, bring I was out there some, for that one. Yeah. They brought out some, uh, maybe ladders or something. Uh, so they just make me aware of what's going to happen before I go down to ringside and it starts happening. Or, so the that, guy um, that was, the, the guy that was in charge, he'd also, you know, be telling me, Oh, you know, this guy's coming out. He's going to do this. So just be in this spot. Huh? Mm -hmm. So they're not worried about like kayfabe or anything like that. They're, they're there to make sure that they get the good pictures and stuff. Yeah. I, I was only ringside, never, you know, backstage. Cause we'd sign mm -hmm. a, uh, we'd have a waiver. Um, and so it, it, you know, we we're just at ringside and, uh, yeah, they just want to make sure that the magazine that I'm there for gets good shot shots and yeah, like the one you see there of, uh, Shawn yeah. Michaels, triple H, which was pretty I feel cool. Like it's weird. <laughs> like, how do you go from being a photographer for like a local Minnesota company and then you go and you're like, oh yeah, I've, I've shot Triple H and Shawn Michaels. Do they like say anything to you when they're in the ring or are they just mostly interacting with the fans? Uh, the one time, I think it was at Target's. Yeah, it was at Target Center for the CM Punk match. <laughs> and uh, uh, John Cena comes out. I think he was the first one out. And he comes in the ring and he's bouncing around and he sees me at ringside. There's nobody else around ringside except for the, the ring announcer and, you know, the security guy. John Cena sees me. He says, who are you here with? And I'm like, Pro Wrestling Illustrated? He's like, all right. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, cool. And also uh, CM Punk asked me how his hair looked. Huh. Yeah. And then, of course, Did when uh, the last time I was at an event, um, Eric Rowan was at ringside with Daniel Bryan. And he says, hey, how's the wife and kid? Because I've known Eric Rowan since he had wow. his first match at MPW. And before he went to WWE, he uh, had some promo shots done by me to send off to him and came to my house and got the photos and was surprised that my little daughter, who's the same age as his uh, oldest son, uh, wasn't afraid of him. Being a big giant that he yeah, is. Yeah, he's a giant. Uh-huh. <laughs> I feel like I would be afraid of him, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> he's a big guy. So I, I was really hoping. I was well. really hoping that because uh, he was just there at ringside for Dan O'Brien, um, mm -hmm. but I had photos of him published in I think it was the the Wrestler magazine. They do an introducing article, and uh, at the time, Stu Sachs would ask me, "Hey, you got anybody there local that could do an introducing article?" I'm like, "Yeah, I got this guy Thor Marius. He, you know, um, went to Harley Races camp and then." Uh, spent a summer in pro Sanoa, so maybe him and so they did the two-page article there on uh thor Mar marius which is what he was known on the indies mm -hmm. and i was really hoping then that i could have a photo published of him in the wwe because that'd be the only one that i would have been able to do that of yeah. although i've also had photos published of aria davari in an introducing article but he wasn't at any of the shows i went to for wwe as well Okay. So, so that would have been kind of a cool little thing to have. Maybe you do have a little bit more on your list that you could try to get. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Maybe. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although it's always he's not nice with to them have, anymore. Um, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. You can find a way. Oh, Chad so Gable's still there, but yeah. That's true. And you knew him way before when he was in Minnesota. Ooh. So. When he first I, started, I, although that's kind of kayfabe. Is it? <laughs> well, he claims he just had a few matches. Uh, it was just mostly like horsing that. around at the training camp, yeah. Because he won their uh, okay. Tough Enough contest. And so he got free training there at MPW. 
but he wrestled a little oh. bit more in the Indies than he. Uh, so they did the same thing that they did with uh, with Maven or whatever, right? Yeah, they they had a, a MPW had a tough enough contest. Um, I don't know how long oh, it lasted. I don't know if you uh, uh, Tommy Spider Baby Saturday was part of it. Um, Anthrax mm-hmm. was part of it. Uh, and Brookstone, but um, Chaz Betts was the okay. winner. I I know I know the names because I follow your Instagram and stuff like that, but I don't know the people personally unless they can. Yeah, they're a little bit before you. Yeah. Thanks for the plug. Also on Twitter. Actually, no, it's uh, W.A. McCarty. Yeah. Okay. The, the ats, uh, the ats, W.A. McCarty. For both Twitter and Instagram. Is it? Because I wasn't sure. Because when I looked at your Instagram, it said Wayne McCarty. Yeah, it I, says I it was just Twitter, W.A. McCarty. Wah, McCarty. Yep. Interesting. Okay, because I, I first, wasn't made First, middle initials, last name. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's not hard to miss. You look like you yeah, talk about wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. So the way I was able to find all these pictures pretty much was googling you, mm-hmm. and then I put yep. WWE. But when I did that for a while, I would like keep coming up to these same pictures, well, not the same pictures, but the same website, I should say. And like when I would do it, I would get. Something like this. Oh, yeah. Right? CM Punk versus Dan Math or Moth from uh, Ring of Honor in Chicago. Yeah. Street fight. So, oh, you, that was crazy. At the end of you that have one, a blog post. Yeah. It hasn't been updated recently. Good. Uh, stories. But uh, uh, within, a, within a couple of years, I think. I, I, for at one point, I thought I stopped doing it, but then I, I like doing it because it's a good history of wrestling here in the Midwest, uh, with the amount of different promotions and shows that I went to, um, showing a lot of the wrestlers that were here at the time, or even when I went to uh, Ring of Honor, I put that on there, and uh, so and it's also good, you know, go back for me of looking to see what I did, but and a good resource for other people. If you want yeah, a good exactly. resource for early uh, Midwest wrestling, Dr. Darren Davis, I'm sure you know the name. Uh, he has a website where he's got mm-hmm. a link to Tim Larson's Upper Midwest Wrestling Newsletter. Early days. We're talking early 2000s. He sent out an email with results, upcoming shows, interviews. And so if you can find uh, Dr. Darren Davis's website, he's got a link to that. Uh, so much information on there of shows that were going at the time. It was it covered Minnesota, Wisconsin, yeah, probably Michigan, Iowa. If there's anything going on at that time, I don't know. Uh, things really didn't start going on in Iowa until 2005 or so. And that was with um, Troy? Well, it, Troy, I think, actually it was before that. I'm sorry. Uh, I was thinking 3XW, but Troy's been going for a long time. Okay. Um, so, yeah, he probably had some shows in there. The Impact uh is it Impact Wrestling? I yeah, think Impact it is Wrestling. Impact because Impact, Impact can actually use Impact. <laughs> yeah, was, Troy's probably had before them. So yep. Um, but yeah, this Ring of Honor show at the um, part of this they, they tried to recreate the Terry Funk, Mick Foley, ECW chairs in the ring. So there are chairs being thrown from the fans all over, and I ducked down behind the barrier. Uh, to not get hit by a chair. Um, yeah. Because they were just flying all over the place. And I believe one of the other Ring of Honor photographers got hit in the back with the chair because she's uh, ducking down right alongside the ring. Uh, not the best place to hide. <laughs> because those yeah, chairs were They probably don't get insurance everywhere. from that. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, anybody on the indie level have insurance? <laughs> um, I think that's kind of an issue right now because some people have been hurt and laid off and so on yeah. and so forth. It's they're able to use the GoFundMe, so yeah, that that helps for them. But if you don't have a job that has insurance, what do you it's do? Scary. It is, yeah. Because one day you can be having fun wrestling a couple easy matches. You trip, you break your leg, as, and uh, you're done. Yeah, or just a simple move, maybe gone slightly wrong, and there goes your broken leg or whatever. Yeah, even worse. So, 
Mm -hmm. And I think that 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 was a crazy match. And just walking around ringside, uh, there's just a whole bunch of debris around ringside, tables broken, chairs all over the place. And if I'm not mistaken, I think this might have been a show that I drove to uh, with Chris Vetter um who used to write a lot of reviews of shows he'd go to shows all over the place write reviews post them online he might might have even done uh star ratings i can't remember um but a lot of the wrestlers knew him back in the time and so i get in my car and i'm driving and i realize i'm wearing uh slipper or uh, sandals I'm like not good for ringside to be wearing sandals so just across the border in wisconsin I stop at a Target to buy tennis shoes to get a little more protection for my shoes. So I go buy the cheapest pair of tennis shoes I can find there and uh, put them in the back of my car. I get to Chippewa Falls to meet with Chris and we take his car. I forget to put the tennis shoes in the car. So we get to Milwaukee because I think it was Milwaukee and then Chicago. And we get to Milwaukee first and I realize, oh, I forgot my tennis shoes in my car. That would be so. We so got to look search around, and this is uh, you know previous to the smartphone, so it's really we're just driving around looking for a Target or some type of t- shoe store to get new shoes. So I buy another pair of shoes there uh, somewhere there in Milwaukee. So it's good that I had better shoes for this event than yeah. just uh, sandals. Yeah, because that wasn't proper footwear for. A street fight where there's chairs, <laughs> tables, ladders, whatever else around ringside. Is there like an expected um, wardrobe that you should wear as a black. photographer? All black, black. all the time. All okay, black. So just like wrestlers. <laughs> I did get in somewhat of a not trouble, but uh, at one of the WWE events I went to, my jeans weren't black. And I didn't really realize it, but it's like they were light blue. And I saw a photo afterwards. It's like, oh, wow. Yeah, those really just show up. Yeah. (laughs) Because they they want all black. Because if you look at any of the uh, camera crew around ringside, they're all in black. Mm -hmm. So it just uh, takes away attention from the the other people at ringside that don't need the attention. The photographers, video guys. So black is what every photographer should be wearing at ringside. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. So, hey, you got any other photos? There we go. Yeah. Okay. Interesting, because I've never done that, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're all black? You can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, you froze again. Darn. How to fill dead space. Well, also behind me, here is a picture of Molly Holly. She gave that uh, autograph photo to me. And we got a uh, great Sasuke. I took a photo of him with uh, oh Taka. Takamishinoku and got great Sasuke to sign that at a first wrestling event. And when he showed up here a couple of years ago, that picture was taken in uh, Chiba, Japan at Blue Field, home of uh, Pro Wrestling. Uh, I got a photo I took of AJ Styles there back when he appeared at MPW. Uh, also on that show was uh, Christopher Daniels against Eric Cannon. That one, AJ wrestled against Shifty. It was one of Shifty's last matches. It wasn't that good. But Eric Cannon had a really good match with him. Um, and, uh, yeah, I got, had him sign that at the uh, Minnesota State Fair. He was appearing there for WWE and Comcast and got that printed up the night before for when I found out about the show. And so my wife and daughter were gracious enough to sit in line with me for an hour to get him to sign that. And he signed that. So, wow, this is old. Yep. That was like 15 years ago. And he actually became the MPW Universal Champion at that time. So that was his first Universal title before his WWE Universal title. And I believe it's always listed on his uh, cage fight or whatever uh, wrestling there. 
Hi, Wayne. Hey, Nick, how you doing? <laughs> so I, I spent the last minute messing with you to see if you would notice, but then it kind of lagged up anyway. Uh-huh. But I, I added the smile. I got the message. To see, to see, yep. Yeah, to see how long <laughs> it would take to catch up. Uh, uh-huh. But yeah, I got a little bit of side content for that. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm glad you uh like to keep talking about wrestling because like when wrestlers kind of get away from wrestling, they have to kind of go through like a purging of not watching wrestling mm -hmm. and they just want to pull away from it and they get too critical and they get too personal. Do you kind of get that as a photographer? Uh, no, no. Uh, Cause I've, you know, still got all my social medias where I see everybody else's posts. I see other photographers posts, uh, wrestlers posting from the shows. So I, I still see all that. I, I well, what I mean is like, all, you don't so... get like jealous or like envious uh... or like, I could have I'll been say there. a little bit. Yeah, okay. a little bit of like, you know, I'd still like to be there. Um, mm -hmm. like there was a first wrestling event at uh, Sunday after the AEW show. So it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, that would have been nice to be there. But if I'm going to break away, I might as well break away all the way. So, um, but it, it, I still go to shows as I went to the AEW show there, uh, both Friday yeah. and Saturday night. Friday, because I want to see Aria versus uh, uh, Dante. Yeah, when they uh, announced that match because they didn't have a ticket that day, and they announced that match, I'm like, okay, I'll get a ticket. Went to Stump yeah, Pop. That's interesting. A cheap ticket. <laughs> so oh, okay, it was cool because Arya, I've also I photographed his match. His first match was across the street there, First Avenue. One of the uh, few people really? who have had their debut show or debut match at First Avenue. Because uh, wow. back in the day, before First Wrestling, it was uh, First Avenue. Uh, wrestling was on like a Tuesday night or Wednesday night, something like that. It was just something to fill the place and sell drinks on a weekday night once a month. But still, that's where all the wrestlers wanted to wrestle because it's First Avenue. You know, who doesn't want to go to First mm -hmm. Avenue? It's special. Exactly. Yeah, I talked to Eddie Kingston, actually, after the AEW events. And he says, yeah, he wants to come to First Avenue because he's a big fan of Prince. So yeah. just to wrestle in the place that, you know, Prince made famous. Um, but they weren't really great shows back then because it was just, you know, mostly the local guys and go out there and wrestle. And um, but that's where everybody wanted to be. I look at some of my photos from those uh, earlier uh, First Avenue shows and you can see a lot of wrestlers in the crowd because they just wanted to be on the show, but they want to be really? there to be seen. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm hmm. Because, I mean, what other place in, in Minnesota do you want to wrestle in? Yeah, really. I mean, not, the Cottage like, Grove Armory? No. Yeah. West St. Paul Armory? Maybe. But first half. down the street, it'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah, but. sure. But, I mean, what would your goal to be is to wrestle at First Avenue? Yeah. Or exactly. Target Center. Target Center. Yeah, Target sure. Center, XL. But other than that, on the indie level, it's to be able to but be a first But even then, I, I feel like First Avenue has, like, almost like a, a, a heritage. Like, it has its own culture to it, almost. Like, going to Target Center for a Wolves game doesn't seem as special as going to, like, a first show, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So it yeah. kind of has created its own meta almost to where it is its own event. And people know First Avenue because probably mostly because of like the prints and stuff like that and like mm -hmm. the beautiful art outside the building. But like people have mentioned it in songs. I don't know if you're you're hip to songs that are like within the last decade, but there was a song that even mentioned First Avenue like within like the last 10 years that was uh, pretty popular. Yeah, who who is that? Um, I want to say it was Macklemore or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think was I it? think you're right. I think you're right, Macklemore. Yeah, uh, singing about being a First Avenue. Yeah, yeah, like that. That yeah. makes it more special, but it allows other people to get like that peep, like the little peek behind the curtain or like into the window of what Minnesota is, because all we're known for apparently is lakes and the Mall of America. Uh huh. And then every other big city 
has their own center, the Staples Center, the X, Y, and Z Center. We already have the Target Center, but not everyone has a First Avenue. Well, on that level, it's like New York has CBGB or, you know, L.A., I think, is Whiskey something. I trust Whiskey you. Go-Go, <laughs> something like that, or Viper yeah. Room, some, you know. Yeah. So it, it's, it's the main place in Minnesota, Minneapolis, uh, for music and then pro wrestling. Pretty cool. Yeah. It's a very intimate setting. Because uh, I mean, if you look at any of my photos from uh, First Avenue years before, for well, actually even to the first few years of First Wrestling, there was very few people around ringside. And then all of a sudden, Wrestlepalooza came along, and there's no room. Yeah, They had to then bring in the barricades to give a little bit of room for the photographers and uh, video guys to be able to move around ringside. Otherwise... That first show where I think it was a sellout, I'm like pushing people to the side to try to move around the <laughs> ring because they're right wow. up there. And even now with the barriers, they can still put their beer on on the ring apron, the hardest part of the ring. Yeah, it's, so, it's very close. Yeah, they're, they're right up there. And there's other independent shows in uh, bars that where they're that close to the ring. I've seen them on, uh, on the internet where, mm-hmm. yeah, the fans are right there resting their drinks on, on the ring apron the hardest part of the ring yeah it's like the pwg yeah. kind of thing it gives it yeah. that atmosphere mm-hmm. and i think that is like one of the ideal goals that most people have for independent wrestling is like either you want to be in a big arena and it's packed and it's a luxurious thing like wrestlemania or it's super super intimate yeah yeah, because at WrestleMania, there's so many fans that are so far away from you, they can barely see you. I've mm-hmm. never been to WrestleMania, but... Uh, maybe it'll come to Minnesota. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. We were close. So close. Had uh, U.S. Bank not spill the beans first. And WWE say, no, 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 it's got to be introduced on a ESPN or whatever you know, new Well, site. we did get the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Did you go to that? I I didn't even go. I have I not been to U.S. Bank stadiums. Week. Yeah. Okay. I've never been there. So I have no idea if it was even cool or what. I don't know who played or anything. Me neither. I'm. I think I'm pretty much anti-sports except for the entertainment kind, just because <laughs> the sports like, entertainment. Yeah, yeah, like it's just hard to keep up. I feel. Mm-hmm. I didn't really grow up with football or anything like that, so it's not a, a high priority for myself. Yeah. But, I'm not really a sports fan as well. So there are a lot of different scenarios that you would have to take pictures as an independent professional photographer. And like being outside at daytime and at nighttime, indoors, like at Battleground, the lighting is is pretty terrible, but it's kind mm-hmm. of like atmospheric. So it's very specific. How have you gone to ensure that like you can get the best picture quality possible at each venue? Uh, there's some venues where it's just so dark. It, it's really hard. You know, I use a flash, but uh, it's so dark. It's a lot of my shots aren't usable. Um, you know, I try the best I can. Um, I, I could bump up the iOS on my camera to a higher number, but it doesn't always work out. So, yeah, venues with good lighting yeah. are a lot better. But when they're just dark and yeah. a couple of lights... Uh, there's only so so much you can do. So if if someone were starting a wrestling company, the first thing that they should get besides a ring and sound might be lights. Uh, maybe. Yeah. A couple yeah. of them. Maybe. A couple lights. Nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although <laughs> like, even uh, Ring of Honor, when they've been to town, they have uh, four sets of lights. You know, one on each corner backways, mm-hmm. but still, those are hard to work with. Because they're just glaring down in the ring, yeah. So it, it's a matter of getting the right position around the ring, so you're not really affected by those lights. Because those, I mean, they light up the ring very nice, but as a photographer, it, it kind of affects the shots. Yeah, definitely. And and I feel like for how many pictures you guys have to take to be able to find maybe one good yeah. one per match, yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's pretty generous sometimes. Sometimes it is, yeah. I've I've had people ask, "Hey, you got any good shots of this match?" I'm like, "Yeah, that match, no." <laughs> uh, 
No, not because of lighting or anything like that, but just I'm in the wrong part of the ring sometimes, and mm -hmm. you don't know where the action is going to take place. So anticipating so, that helps out, but it doesn't always work out. So WWE Sports Entertainment, they they have kind of like cornered themselves with calling it entertainment, but I kind of like that in regards to like when they told you, hey, this stuff is going to kind of come into play because we know it's going to happen because we're not just like, eh, we'll figure it out when we're out there. They kind of are allowing you to get the best shot that you can. What mm -hmm. are some ways that other independent wrestlers can get the most out of their pictures and make sure at least they get one good picture from their match? Well, one is know where the photographer is. Um, you know, maybe spot them at the ringside and you're going to do the move towards them. Um, also talk to them before the match. A lot of times, you know, the photographers are let backstage, uh, whether to do promo shots or just uh, try to get some information. Um, if you know you're going to do something in your match that's kind of big, um, let the photographer know. Let, let them know maybe where you're going to do it towards. Are you going to do it towards, is there hard cam? Are you going to be, you know, towards the hard cam with that move? Um, so the photographer shouldn't be on the, the side of the hard cam, but they can at least be on the corner around, around the corner to the hard cam to mm -hmm. be able to get that shot. Um, there was a heavy on wrestling show where there was a veteran wrestler who, you know, I introduced myself to him. He's like, Hey, I'm going to be doing this move. It's great for photos. So, you know, be there for that. Um, so he told me what the move is and I got some great shots of it. Uh, so yeah, talk to your photographer. If you know you're going to do something cool or even, uh, just to be able to know where he's going to be, um, while you're out there wrestling. Also, when you go out there before the match, it, it's good to get, um, a good shot of you. Um, you know, um, just kind of a, what do they call a can candid shot? Uh, okay. like the one at Triple H and Shawn Michaels, you showed so they're just okay. standing there ringside. They didn't know I was taking the photo, but, you know, the tag teams, if you're a tag team, stand by your tag team partner. Because when I'm out ringside taking photos, yeah, uh, most of the times I try to get a shot of each person before the match starts. Them just kind of standing there. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to pose for the photographer. Jerry Lynn has done this. For the couple of show, uh, matches I've taken of him, he'll turn to the photographer. He, hey, there's a photographer ringside. I'll pose. You know, you do a flex, whatever. You see the flash go off, then go about whatever on in the ring. Um, at uh -huh. WWE, Maurice, Mrs. Miz, she saw a photographer at ringside. She's like, hey, I'm going to pose for this guy. That pub the photo got published. So yeah. I think it was in a uh, women, you know, 50 of the year. Uh, the, the top, uh, the PWI uh, top 50 women. Wow. Uh, Maurice. Yeah. So uh, also uh, it's probably not, I, I picked out a magazine here. Um, show. Let's see. Yeah. Bob Amazing. Macklin and Goldust. Uh, there we go. Hey, they, they're looking at me ringside. <laughs> I'm there with the camera. They put yeah. for it. That photo got published. So it's no not too cartoony there. to do that. No, 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 not at all. And uh, I mean, sometimes uh, when they're in a, a headlock or something, pose towards the photographer and do a facial. Uh, there's you know a bunch of wrestlers on the independents. They'll do that. They'll you know smile for the camera. Sometimes they'll even play to the photographer for the fans. Like, hey, mm -hmm. take the picture, take the picture. Um, and you can even pose to the photographer by not posing to the photographer. But okay. just you, you see the photographers right there in front of you. You're, you got the guy in, the, in a chin lock, so it's an easy shot to take. Photographer's mm -hmm. right there. Don't look right at the photographer, but you can look, okay. you know, past the photographer to the fans. That way you're interacting the fans, maybe yelling at them, but you're looking by the photographer. So he gets a good shot of where you're looking towards him. So let me see if I have a good example of this, because I would love to, to get a specific example. I think I might actually have one. This one kind of, to me, seems like that. Ah, yes. Arya Devari, where do you get the stink face from Rikishi? <laughs> or Kishi at that time, yeah. With uh, Scotty Duhati there. 
Oh. Oh, is that him? That's big. Yeah, Sky Two Hottie. Uh, yeah, back there. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, God, where was that match? I think it was up in Duluth. That's a really big. Or heavy on wrestling, I think. Center. Yeah. So Rikishi's looking there. Uh, I don't think that was so much of a pose for the photographer, but just, you know, hey, Ari is down the corner. Rikishi looks towards him, and he knows what's coming next. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you, you know where the photographer is. You can, whether it's the video camera guy, too, or the still photographer, <laughs> because I, I've kind of heard that a lot of times these days uh, people like to get the video. So they want yeah. to know, hey, did you get a GIF of it or did you get a video of that move? Yeah. Because um, they just want to see the action, uh, mm -hmm. not just a reaction to the Videos the do better sometimes. Exactly, yeah. That's somewhat of a reason why I kind of stepped out as well. But Interesting. Uh, yeah, uh, one of the many reasons. But <laughs> So <laughs> looking at this, I can see the referee here. Mm-hmm. And that's not like good or bad. It's just kind of, he has to be somewhere. And he's actually probably in the best spot for whatever's happening in the ring. He's in the opposite corner. Yep. What advice would you give to referees about photography? Because I know, I think uh, Manning, he mm -hmm. has like a whole list of photographer or pictures where the referee is in the way or they get a picture of the ring rope or something like that. Oh, sure. Yeah, I get a lot of, oh, hey, there's the or the referee's leg walked right in front of me. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I'll have a referee come back at, oh, sorry, I got in that shot, or they'll say it during the match. But it's like, don't worry about it. Your job is to referee the match. Okay. Uh, that's all. I mean, that's what they should be concerned about. If there's a video being done of the match, there are one, uh, I guess, main focus is not be on the hard cam side. And, Makes sense. you know, yeah. Um, but as far as uh, the, the still photographer ringside, they got it. The referees got to do their job, their job. So if they can also help with photos as well. Uh, and Molly Holly, uh, Nora Greenwald, uh, you know, knew when she refereed some matches that I took photos of, she knew this would be a good shot to me be right in there. They're doing a camel clutch or something. She knows referees should be right in there. To, you know, hey, are you going to give? Um, so she knows what a uh, referee should be doing in that situation of helping with the photo. She's a referee, a photo, photographer at ringside, knows, hey, this would be a good shot here. Mm -hmm. So because the referee adds to the story. The referee is part of the story. Yeah, you don't get the end of the match without the referee. So they control the, the wrestlers, make them wrestle by the rules. Um but if, if they can pay attention while they're in there to there's a, ref, or a photographer at ringside, maybe not walk in front of them, but if they can't control that walk in front, you know? So, so I don't get a shot. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. If I don't get this one shot, the referee, if you know, they got to make sure they're uh, doing what they're supposed to be doing in that match. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Otherwise yeah. it looks fake. I would. Exactly. Say. Yeah. If they're like too worried about the photographer ringside and, yeah, uh, uh, major league or you know national football referee is going to be worried about a photographer along the sidelines or so. Yeah, exactly. They're going to be expecting mm -hmm. to do or, whatever. Or a boxing they referee, do. they don't care. Yeah. yeah. So referee it like it's legit, and if they can avoid stepping in front, because I've seen that happen where a photographer will wait and you know see the flash and then go by, but. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for referees, do your job. Do the job they're supposed to be doing. Uh, be in the right position. So there's a lot of different ways that people think of photography, but I don't think a lot of people think enough about the, the special promo. Mm -hmm. Right? So this is actually... Here, with that in mind, I'm going to take one quick break here, okay? Hey, that's fine with me. Go ahead. I'll just keep it entertaining. <laughs> All right, Wayne is going to the bathroom, but I don't have anything interesting here except my book. I did write a book. It's for beginner professional wrestlers. It It is something that I wanted to do for a long time, but I didn't know how to take the time to be able to actually do it. 
And through COVID, I actually spent a lot of time splitting my time up between the podcast, my YouTube channel. And then I decided like halfway through, I wanted to write something. So I started writing. Let me just at least make it me. I wanted to make something that would help other people beyond audio and video. So I wanted to write a book. And I wrote my book, and it's available on Amazon for $9.99, or it's free if you use your 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 Kindle e-reader. It's not a physical copy yet. I haven't gone that far. I didn't want to do that. just wanted to spend more time on other stuff. So we have Wayne back, and we are going to discuss promos. Ah, AJ Styles. 2004. Can I ask so, you, did you know look, he was going to be as good as he was? Um, at that time, no. I, I, I probably really didn't know much about him then. I, I think I might have seen him on um, NWA Wildside before this. Uh, maybe, I can't remember if he was at TNA at that time. But uh, that, yeah, I told you that night he was there with Christopher Daniels. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, he, he was good. I, I didn't know he'd go on to be WWE champion. No. But let's talk about posing. Because yeah, a lot of please, times I'll get some young what wrestler. What do I do? Exactly. What do, what, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> well, okay, there's one pose right there. I mean, here's the thing. You, you're you going through wrestling training, right? You're learning all the moves and stuff. Um, you're going to go to a promo shot. And you, you don't know what you're going to do. Take a little time. Uh, go on WWE.com. Look at their post shots. Here's a book right here. I got it from the library. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's kind of like the WWE encyclopedia, but it's... Superstar handbook. Yeah, so it's got little quick bios here, the wrestlers. But just look through this book and see all the poses that the wrestlers do. It's kind of funny because, like the one here, a lot of the photos are like this. Hands yeah, down, I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> Hands down, your side. Now, I marked a few here. You know, the other one, yeah, uh, Andra, Andrade, uh, arms crossed. Okay, there's mm-hmm. another pose. So you should be able to, when you get in front of the photographer, to be able to do a bunch of these poses really quick. Flash goes off, another pose. Flash goes off, another pose. You know, here's uh Billy Gunn doing mm-hmm. some hand movement, you know. Uh, and then we got Bo Dallas here with his hands at his side. Yeah, there we go. Bobby Heenan, what's he known for? Brain. He's the brain. He's pointing at his brain. Cover. Yep. That's so, so easy. Just little hand gestures like that. About it. <laughs> yeah. Classic Bruno San Martino pose right there. Yep. Just hand on the hip, other hand just down at the side. Um, what else we got? Here. Marked a few other ones. So here you got four different poses. You got Carmella there, hands on hips, mm-hmm. uh, Cameron cross arms down at the side, and then a guy in a suit, Byron Saxton, giving the point. Yeah, yeah pointing the fingers, you know. Uh Candace LeRae there with the arms crossed. Those are all basic poses. So when somebody comes to me and say, What do I do? I'm like, okay, do indie guy A. Do indie yeah. guy B, do indie guy C, you know, hands on the hips. So, mm-hmm. but there's resources like this out there where you can go, whether you get this book here, here we've got Shotzi with just her hand on her, one hand on the hip, one hand down. Mm-hmm. So many, just go on the website of www.com, the biggest wrestling or sports entertainment promotion in the world. And look at what they have for post shots and take a look at those. And, incorporate it with your character uh because mm-hmm. what's your character character going to do now you had a previous character mm-hmm. where there were some maybe hand motions you would do you know? yeah yeah uh so think about what you want to do with your hands but mm-hmm. also when you go in there uh pay attention to what's behind you the backdrop okay mm-hmm. i had a five by seven backdrop most of the time that i used it was a fold out thing five by seven a lot of wrestlers would come out and do this 
And their like, arms okay, are your arms are past there. Yeah, your arms are past. Now I got to go extra around to you know cut out the arms and stuff. So keep it within. I think I had another photo here. Uh, where was he? Diamond Dallas Page. What's he usually do with those hands? Where's you? Where, where does he usually put those hands? Up. up in the air. Way but for this higher. shot, mm -hmm. he brought him down. Brought him down here. So instead of doing this and taking up way more space, he just brought him down here. Right. So I got all the rest. You know, big tall wrestlers would put their hands up in the air and then it's going to way up past the background. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'd ask him, "Can you like bend your knees a little bit so you yeah. can get you all within the background here?" You know, just squat down a little bit, like Thor. Uh, he'd be one of them. Uh, Lance Hoyt, to scoot down a little bit. My background doesn't go up that high, so just be uh, pay attention to what's behind you as well for mm -hmm. what you're doing with your poses. If you want to do this, maybe just bring it in like this, you know, a little, little bit tighter. Um, if you got muscles, show them off. Make sure you're flexing those muscles, uh, whether you oil up beforehand. But uh, there's one in here of uh, China. Where's she at? I was pretty confident you were going to say Lex Luger when you said oil. <laughs> yeah, but there's China showing off her biceps there. She's flexing those muscles. If, if you work on those muscle, muscles and you got big muscles, make sure you're flexing them when you're taking that post shot. Also, what are you going to do for facial expression? You a good guy? You a bad guy? You going to smile? You going to grimace? You gonna, you know, be angry? Uh, do multiples. Just uh, I've taken some post shots of guys who it's after a while. They're like, finally, you got enough? I'm like, well, I could keep going. If you got more poses, you want to keep on going. Yeah. I, I've got plenty of space here on my card. So, you know, don't get any good ones. We can delete them, but you got plenty of good stuff here. So, yeah, there's there's guys who will go out there and they know uh, pose. They see the flash go off, another pose. Flash goes off, another pose. Uh, maybe if they know they blinked, you know, same pose. But, um. Yeah, you get in front of that photographer for your post shot because that could be what's going to be on posters, yep. uh, your 8x10, uh, T-shirts. So know what your character is. Present that when you take your photo. If you don't know what your character is, yeah, it might be a little bit more difficult and you might just end up with the generic hands down at your side. And maybe so a smile. Wh what's the negative of just having a generic promo picture? Because I can say they're generic and I can say this mm -hmm. is... This is, I don't, I could say boring, but like, what does yeah. that mean to someone who's looking at a poster, so to speak? Do they want to see that wrestler? Do they want to buy a ticket? That's what you're doing. You're you're selling to you know if your uh, image is going to be on that poster. That's what they're looking at to maybe. Do I want to go to the show? So, I mean, yeah, you can do the generic photos, which because that book. The book is full of them. Generic yeah. photos of just them with their hands at their side. I don't know if that's all the because this is by uh, DK Publishing. So I don't know if that's all that WWE gave them or or what. But uh, I, and I see a lot of photographers these days do a lot more portrait photography. You know, they might be a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. They play with the lighting a little bit more. Uh, I don't know if those are good for posters. Or eight, they're probably good for eight by tens, um, but yeah, you you want to present your your character and just do some good poses. And I feel like with posing, it, it comes with also being able to go with a live camera. So in an event, so when you're trying to get your poses how does it help to get good pictures for your, like your entrance? Should it be very consistent? So the photographer knows where to be, or is it just like, it's cool to have the action shot of someone going, yeah. And then like the people are cheering mm -hmm. like, like the old Jericho thing where he would go up against the railing and all the people were freaking out behind him and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm not real sure. Are there, um, if you keep it consistent, photographers mm -hmm. know what's going to happen. So, yeah, if you're always going to do that, lean up against the guardrail and the photographer knows, oh, I'm going to get this good shot. 
Mm-hmm. So they know where to be, be ready for it. And it, it, it is a good visual, especially if you're the good guy and people are going to be behind you cheering. And yeah. When someone is trying to apply their character, what is something that you think they could do to pull that out or some sort of exercises to get people loose? Like you can't have a shot every single time you go take eight by tens. You know what I mean? You can't go smoke before you come do these pictures and have red eyes. <laughs> Uh, oh, a lot of times I'd get people who'd be like, yeah, can we do it after the match? I'm like, okay, don't get chopped, <laughs> you know, cause you're going to have big, big chop marks, uh, bruises on your chest, but all mm-hmm. right, this one fun, right but... here, I, I have a giant chop mark on my neck. Cause I was like, yeah. oh, I'll just do my picture afterwards. Exactly. But, See? But Damon smacked me as hard as he possibly could. Uh huh. <laughs> and I understand that sometimes you're, you know, worried about you thinking about your match and what's going to happen, but. I've had other uh, wrestlers who they're ready to go out through the curtain and they did post shots right there. So maybe yeah. their match is that easy, but, but they're ready to go before their match and take some I photos. I think it has to do with like comfortability. I don't know. Mm-hmm. If yeah, I know there because there's other wrestlers who'd be like, stuff. yeah, I don't want to do it, you know, before the match. Cause I'm too concerned about it. There might be some people who are uh, really got to keep in mind what's going to happen during the match and don't want to forget if they go mm-hmm. in front of a camera, then, now their concentration is lost. So, but if they could get in gear before the show starts <laughs> and take photos, mm-hmm. but that you know that was tough to do, uh, get people to do that. Nobody wants to get ready hours before their match, right? But being yeah. proactive just kind of seems like something that it's not even being proactive. It's just planning. Like mm-hmm. if you want to do this as a, a profession, you got to get good at kind of everything. You already have to know how to do pro wrestling but you also have to be able to understand posing and like besides working out like you have to plan for every single moment of, of yeah promoting sure you yourself get your pictures done you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah so when i'm gonna use jdx as an example he takes a lot of pictures but they're not like this right they're not this kind of picture they're not face selfies they're like legitimate background he's got somebody with like him yeah somewhere how do i uh-huh. take, yeah how do i take pictures of myself like do i just drag my selfie stick with or what like i don't know get a friend bring your girlfriend bring somebody with you find another wrestler do them together yeah just go make a day of it if you got some time go to some location take some shots put them on your social media because, yeah, the example you brought up, JDX, all the time, he's, you know, hanging out in Chicago, just someplace, putting some content mm-hmm. out there. Yeah, so it's important for the wrestlers to be you know, putting the content out there on their social medias. Yeah, especially now with, with how fast everything moves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because if you go on Instagram, Twitter, um, even TikTok and Facebook, the big four, you are not going to see something posted from six months ago. Unless you go Unless to my you site. Look yeah. For it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's 15 years ago. <laughs> 10 and 15 years ago. Yeah. I, I, I like somehow stumbled on that. That worked out that 10 and 15 years ago, uh, Fridays and Saturdays matched up with Fridays and, or Thursdays and Fridays now. So throwback Thursdays, flashback Fridays just worked yeah, out. Easy. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. So yeah. I I was looking up topics to discuss and there was one that caught my eye mm-hmm. and it's called toy photography and people will okay. set up their their action figures, their their dolls. Uh-huh. If you want to if you want to make the action figures mad. not dolls. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's get it straight. I I got a couple. They're they're for sale. So I bought uh-huh. a bunch. I sell them on my shows when I decide to wrestle again <laughs> but people will like set up their figures here hold on um it's right here let me zoom in these are this. all wrestlers that have uh taken photos of that have been published in magazines oh so, really let's see i got this camera to move here greg Ganya got a him throwing a drop kick okay. uh baron von raschke put a claw hold on uh nikki free down in iowa and he was recently seen on AEW uh, mm-hmm. uh, Full Gear. Uh, 
Nia Jax, uh, Sheamus, Sean Davari, Arya Davari. Sean Davari, I got a photo of him because he put a guy out in a sleeper hold on a light rail. Uh, who else back there? Bailey. Oh, yeah, Big I remember show. that. That was right when I started. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I had a picture of him with a sleeper hold on Ryan Cruz that got published. That's clever. Mm-hmm. So that, that's my wrestling figure collection. One. I have more than that, but I, I started doing that collection. Ah, Seamus right there. Yep. The cover for us illustrated. My second cover. My third yeah. is John Cena. See, I couldn't find it. I, yeah. I was like, he has one of John Cena. I know he does, but and, I don't want a it's screenshot. It's in my collection there somewhere. I don't know where, but it's in one of my... That one would be uh, on my house. I would put that on my on my windows. I would put that in my car. <laughs> that one would be everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I do have the Seamus and the first one uh, DX up on my wall. Yeah. But I only have one copy of the John Cena. Okay. And it's in it's a bag and board. In and, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so for the toy photography, have you ever done anything like that? Just like, it, well, as with this, I've, I've thought about it because my idea is to recreate the photos that were published oh. with the action figures. So I have to then try to get the figures uh, that were, were published, and then try. I'm trying to get them as close to the gear that they're in, oh. uh, which isn't always possible because. Like at a house show, um, yeah, they just have miscellaneous. Charlotte sometimes. wore like a T-shirt at the house show. I don't even think she took the T-shirt off, so there's not going to be a figure with her. Nice indie style. Who is just the T-shirt? <laughs> yeah, uh, but there is someone on my yeah. Instagram. I forget his name, but he does a lot of the the personal art. I don't know um, what he would charge to hypothetically do it, but. Hmm. To oh to customize or. Yeah, just a to figure? make it so where you could at least do where that. Where it'd be at least the, the closer to the gear, yeah. Yeah. Um, is that Phenomenal Figures, I think? Yes, it is. Okay, yeah, local That's guy, yeah. Jaren. Yeah, I haven't Jerry. met him, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... So I've toyed with that idea for a little bit uh, with the toys. Mm-hmm. Of, Go figure. Uh, one in, I have in mind is... Uh, it was Triple H given the knee to Randy Orton. So I have the Triple Ooh. H, but I, I, I got to get in the right gear. I've got to get the DX mm-hmm. gear, and then, but then that in, that would involve uh, like fish line because you got to have them up in the air, and you got to make yeah. sure you get one that's articulated enough so you can raise the knee because some don't have the bendable knees. Oh, you got to get like the thirty dollar figures. Those ones yeah, are really nice now. Exactly. So, but I go to the local toy shows and hope to find some there loose. Mm-hmm. So I haven't found any yet that I could do. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been toying with that idea. Interesting. Doing some I, didn't, photography. I didn't know it was so big, but sometimes because I follow like WWF indie wrestling hashtags and stuff like that. So sometimes it'll pop up and I'm like, oh my God, this guy just Check made out, the whole arena. That's got to be Bud Light Theater. Sounds Bud like Light it. Theater. I, yeah, he's got, he's got like a bunch of the wrestlers in the ring, uh, like in the stands Mm -hmm. and he'll recreate, uh, uh, like a moment and then show the video from where that moment was taken. So yeah, he, he does some great stuff. That's crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, that's very like, what's the way to put it? Like very dedicated because that's like doing the, the still shot animation. Like, how do well, you he's do creating that? the whole arena too, and then also, yeah, the he because he's got to have, you know, sometimes like fish line holding somebody up, or and then mm-hmm. editing that out so you can't see the fish line. Um, but yeah, I, I've seen some really good toy photography. There's a guy who comes to local toy shows, and he's got like eleven by seventeen prints of his photos of toys, oh. like in nature. Uh, so just other action figures, uh, Star Wars or um, mm-hmm. maybe Power Rangers or something like that. But uh, but that Bud Light Theater does some great stuff with the recreating so, of iconic images. 
that's a really interesting way to be able to like sell your photography, I guess, especially now with like NFTs and stuff like that. I have no idea what NFTs are. They're None. like virtual baseball cards. I, I don't <laughs> get that. They're similar. I it's also don't, don't get me. Bitcoin, so. Oh, I'm scared of that stuff. I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to risk any money. I'll I'll put my stocks on Amazon. I'll buy some Tesla. I'll buy some mm -hmm. Target. But I don't know about all this uh, interdimensional coinage. It's very confusing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's yeah, money in it, it, probably. But there I'm is apparently. I've got coworkers who have invested money in it and made money. For, so apparently, you can make money from it. But how how do you make money with like sports photography? How do you sell it? Because if you're not given a job from Pro Wrestling Illustrated how would you make money off of it? Uh, some people have done books. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done, I've seen books. Kyle's book. Knocked out yeah, Kyle's done one. Uh, Michael Watson's done a couple. Mm -hmm. um, I, oh, Manning's done one, I believe. Yeah. So he has, you yep. can create some books. Yep. Uh, fanzines. You can do some zines. Uh, those are a little bit cheaper than the books. Um, yeah but yeah uh, i believe other people have smug mugs where they can sell photos that they've taken i think high spots worked a little sell... bit with selling some actual photos yeah they're they're doing a lot of live streams and stuff like that just sign and then sell mm -hmm. uh, i've sold some prints before uh mm -hmm. it's been a while since i've done it but i'll print up some photos uh, like five by seven and i've sold some of those is it okay it's to not really sell a money maker? those that shows? Uh, as permission. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I've never I, seen I've anyone of, besides wrestlers sell stuff. Yeah, I've heard of a story where somebody had a photo of a wrestler and the wrestler came up and tore them all up. <laughs> he's like, "Hey, he's not mine. <laughs> I'm not getting money from this." Oh. <laughs> so, but if you get permission from him, you could possibly sell. Yeah, not all the wrestlers out there are selling eight by tens. And if you maybe give, you know, share profits with them or come up with some deal. Yeah, like a community, basically. Like mm -hmm. I I was just getting started and I wasn't nobody. I was just a trainee and I ended up selling some stuff for Frogger or Super Thunder Frog, I guess people call him now. Yeah. But um, I sold one of his pictures for like 10 bucks and he's like, yeah, I'll cut you in on whatever, whatever I sell. I was like, OK. I don't really want it, but whatever. But then he <laughs> tried to offer me like a dollar or two. I'm like, no, no, thank you. It's okay. It's it, it was fun well, actually just sitting there and being like a part of the show. But people are nice enough to like make that um that deal with people who are mm -hmm. like helping them, so to speak. Like you, oh, you're at, at his Pat gimmick stand you or his gimmick table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, because if or you're if not there, like he's not the selling. Photographers so... wanted to sell pictures of me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But so yeah, yeah like if any of the other photographers sold stuff of me, I wouldn't be upset. I don't feel like because I, I would just tell them like, "Hey, um, that's okay," or I would like some money for it, or we can work mm -hmm. on a deal. But I would want people to sell stuff of me because that's spreading my brand awareness. I would imagine. Seems yeah. like a win-win. Mm -hmm. Or you could strike a deal Very and say, hey, can I buy me. this photo from you? <laughs> Just to make a and few then, dollars. Yeah, because the wrestler could then, you know, maybe buy the photo from the photographer and then sell it on their own. So then that way the photographer makes yeah. some money. From so how it. does that work for you? Uh, well, mm -hmm. it doesn't anymore, but... Uh, <laughs> So I yeah I would sell some photos if, to some photographers and then they'd I'd give them permission to print up as many as they want and sell them. Mm -hmm. You know, give them a digital a picture copy of one of the events. What if you took a picture of one of the events I was on and I wanted to use it as like an action shot and sell it as an eight by ten? Yeah, we'd work out a deal. Uh, I what remember there was oh, uh, you know money exchange hands. It's up to the <laughs> yeah, individual. I would money. Yeah, it's up to the individual photographer and wrestler to make that deal. 
Because I remember mm -hmm. there was one newer photographer who gave an outrageous amount for a photo. <laughs> Uh, not, you know, just kind of throwing out a number, which, cause the thing is this pay scale for the independent wrestling is much lower than for other things. Uh, especially with you know, like, okay. say my pay for pro wrestling illustrated there. Uh, I sold a photo of spider baby to a magazine okay. and got paid way more than I would for pro wrestling illustrated. So really? yeah. Just because yeah. they didn't understand the, I, um, well, no, I, no, because that's that's that because that's me. like really the going rate of the magazines, but for some reason, Pro Illustrated pays a lot less. Uh, yeah. So, if a photographer comes in, maybe they got a wedding background or mm -hmm. you know uh, other photo background where the rates are a lot higher. Um, I don't know if you ever looked into a wedding photographer or anything like that, but they cost mm -hmm. quite a bit. Yeah. Oh, you haven't. Okay. Yeah, I don't even window shop there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's a scary price. So they they would charge a lot more for roughly the same work that would go maybe into a wrestling show, of photographing, maybe doing promos, and so mm -hmm. yeah, the the pay scale for indie wrestling is much lower. And so I mean, you know what a wrestler gets paid. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. for a photographer to think that they're going to make more money on that, which was that case where I told you the wrestler who asked a photographer, Hey, can I use that image? And they like threw out a huge number and it's like, Ooh, wow. It's a lot. Yeah. And whereas I would have given a much lower number. So but that's negotiable. Like if someone yeah, likes yeah. to change it, they're like, Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But no one's going to take less money. <laughs> yeah. Once they're offered it. Mm-hmm. So how do you know when you get the shot? Like when you're taking it and you like, you take it and you're like, there it mm -hmm. was, or is it when you pull away and you take that look and you're like, yes. Yeah. It's when you actually look at the image because I've taken some and think, Oh, I got it. But then maybe eh, it turned out slightly blurry. It's not as good as what I thought. Mm -hmm. So not really until I look at it. Cause people ask, Oh, did you get some, some good shots? And I'm like, I don't know until I look at them because I may right. have hit the button that at the right sense. time, but it's it's all a matter of uh, timing. Hair might have gotten yeah, in the I way like or, kind of you know, just, yeah. So as I go back and look through photos, I'm like, okay, that was, you know, second off. Thought it hit the right time, but. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's not until I look That's at them afterwards on the bigger screen. Because even even still, I might look at on the camera on the back, but that's mm -hmm. what an inch or two. It's a small space. Yeah, if that. Um, yeah, so it might. Oh yeah, it looked great. And then I look at it later, I'm like, uh, not so great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so you might think you got the shot, but then you look back afterwards on the computer, and it's not that great. Because there are plenty that are like. What that. have you done to like get the shot? If that makes sense. Oh, be in the right spot. You don't know. No, no, uh, no. Anticipate like, extreme situations. Oh, um, gosh, I don't think any really come to mind right away, but any actual incidents? Or I guess that one with the chairs would be pretty extreme. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but to, I mean, there's maybe been times where I've, you know, run around to uh, up to the bathroom at First Avenue to get a good shot mm -hmm. of Horace the Psychopath sitting on a urinal, you know, just moving with the action. Yeah. yeah. I feel like a lot of the street fights don't get enough pictures taken. And I don't know if it's because, like, it's too crowded or because the photographers aren't there. But I've also seen a lot of people, like, space everything out and say back up and then everyone is out of the way so that way it's like a background mm -hmm. and then you can make the wrestlers more um the focus like they're supposed to be of the shot yeah so i was looking at this one let me see and it i don't know 
So if you can put two more iconic people in a picture for wrestling than these two. Mm-hmm. Mick Foley and Terry Funk. How did this two very nice guys be like? Yeah. They're like the nicest guys in wrestling from what it's oh yeah. Like. They are. Uh both were very nice. Um and so they were just special guest referees there at Heavy on Wrestling. But the cool mm-hmm. thing here is um, I don't know if I, the picture's probably not online, but so I'm taking pictures there with that uh, iconic background. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Um, it's been featured in Pro Wrestling Illustrated a couple of times. Um, but so I'm taking a picture of Venom, and Mick Foley's just mm-hmm. right after the side, and he steps in and takes a picture with Venom. Made Venom look really small, even though Venom's a pretty big guy, but Mick Foley's yeah. pretty big. And so um, he did, Mick Foley did a comedy show up in Duluth for Dave, Heavy on Wrestling. Did he? Dave Sabic, yeah. And so I went up there for that. And before that, I printed up that photo of him with Venom and had him sign that for Venom. Mm-hmm. So it was pretty, it, for, and he wasn't even prompt to, or he just stepped in there and says, hey, take a photo with us. I don't know why he picked Venom, but he just stepped in there and took a photo. Just because but, he was uh, there. Yeah. Yeah, he just stepped in there and took a photo with Venom. I feel and like it was, it's one of those things in wrestling is you're not supposed to take pictures with wrestlers. I think now it's changing a little bit. Yeah, but... you see more of it where even guys working together in the same promotion are taking pictures mm-hmm. with each other and posting them. So, But back in the day, I, oh, here a mark if you take a photo with a wrestler. Yeah, it's it's kind of a really big deal. It's really sad, like, the the biggest fans of pro wrestling aren't allowed to be big fans when big when they become a wrestling. Yeah. 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 It's like you have to lose that. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that's changing. Yeah. Cause there should be anything wrong with taking pictures with your coworkers. No, you know, it's basically what you're doing. Sure. You're, you know, you're not taking pictures with all your coworkers, but some big names like that coming to town. When else are you going to uh, get a chance to see them and take a picture with them? So, yeah, uh, I, Mick Foley actually retweeted that or posted on his Instagram when Terry Funk was not feeling well. Oh, really? He used that photo, yeah. Yep, yeah. but he cropped out my name. <laughs> yeah, unless he got it without without the uh, watermark on there. Sometimes Instagram will actually crop it for you. I'm yeah, sure you've been experienced with that. Yeah, so he might have <laughs> just cropped it out. Um but then uh, somebody posted that, hey, photo by Wayne McCarty. Yeah, and I, and I think that little extra mile probably would make you feel good, right? Like, mm-hmm. it's nice yeah. to get the credit. Yep. Um, even, though, even if he didn't crop it and my name was still on there, it's still nice to get the little tag, the link, you know, so mm-hmm. people then would go to mine. Uh, so there's some wrestlers that are good with that, some that aren't. Uh, some that are really good with, you know, posting, hey, photo by uh, mm-hmm. and giving the link to them. Some that just don't care about it. Yeah, I I was one of those that didn't quite necessarily care, but that mm-hmm. was when I was doing so many posts like every day. So I would like da 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 da, and there'd be like two typos in it, and then oh, I would sure. forget to tag people. Uh huh. But you can always like go back that. and do a like yeah. for Instagram, you can do a comment and at least say, mm-hmm. "Hey, photo was by." Exactly, and I so. think it makes people. I don't know. It's just nice to be nice to your coworkers. That's what we kind of are at this point. Mm-hmm. I would imagine like we all love pro wrestling or if we don't, we, we love getting paid, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I don't know how much people are getting paid to not want to love know. this. If you're, if you're but... for the money, you're in the wrong business. <laughs> for sure. Yep. Yeah. So if, if pro wrestling were to be more, um, cinematic like with lucha underground and stuff like that and focus more on like the thirds and like like this and that way it makes me look more claustrophobic and it gives the the same feelings and it's super uh cinegra- cinematographic it's like super cinematic and it's super in-depth and people take that extra mile to tell extra stories beyond the words and the um the pictures what are some good tools for that? Because that's something that I've been wanting to do is like with my YouTube channel, I want to be more uh, 
more entertaining as opposed to more like informational because doing interviews is great but if i'm just sitting here reading from a script and i don't turn it up to 11 or bring in entertainment i'm only going to be able to get like 500 people if i'm really good like mm -hmm. there are a lot of really good like tyson ducks channel doesn't have enough views for how much information is out there but if people were to make it more entertainment based and more interesting i feel like it would be able to grab more people's attention and maybe you're not the the best person to ask because like you said you're getting out just because of the um the videography type aspect but how should i study photography to make it more entertaining photography or videography both I videography mean, and photography i know they're very different yeah for the but, the for me well, similar. <laughs> look at ethan page have you seen his videos his vlog um i've not seen his vlog actually i've seen other stuff though oh check it out um he did one recently on full gear so he's like you know, here i'm at a hotel in minneapolis and then goes backstage uh talks to wrestlers talks to eddie kingston ruby soho uh does little sit downs with them uh gives greater you know backstage access to mm -hmm. fans it's it's a phenomenal uh youtube series he's got there so just uh i i think he does most of the video work by himself with, i would I imagine probably I just his, his phone. does the same yeah yeah so just give an extra access to fans the backstage or you know uh you go out and do he does uh toy hunts he'll video does he? yeah he'll videotape himself whatever city he goes to he finds out what good toy vintage toy stores there are huh. and shows him going toy hunting uh which that kind of made popular by uh matt cardona <laughs> his uh youtube videos going to toy stores but yeah it's just record yourself uh you know backstage maybe of course let everybody know what you're doing and, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's interesting so i have one more picture that is um it's not bad by any means but, there, <laughs> but there's like bad blood here uh well now. nowadays yeah back then no so, they were the tag team champions then the second what was city it like saints to be around these two together um, yeah I, they were good friends at the time so there's punk being a little bit goofy even though usually at that time he was the serious one mm -hmm. and colt was usually the goofy one um so yeah they, they just won the tag team titles that night they did a uh little promo backstage afterwards where they're all holding up pepsi cups and uh, everybody was around them samoa joe was back there and i think some of their friends because it was in chicago uh, yeah. It was just a goofy moment there where we were taking some pose shots of the new champions. I'm sure the uh, Ring of Honor photographers were around side me there, and it was pretty cool. <laughs> I, I feel like when people look back at their careers, they have specific accolades that they that they look fondly of. And I see behind you is a million things that are like, several different memories and so many different experiences if if you had to pick a top five moments in your career that that felt good for your soul not was like oh this bettered me and it got me the most publicity but it felt good for you mm -hmm. what would those be uh well shooting wwe ringside and getting uh you know cover photo on mm -hmm. Purpose and Illustrated, something I didn't think was going to happen, but it did. Um, going to Japan and photographing some matches there in Japan. That's from a show I went to in 2000, I think it was like February or January 2004. Um, I went there for like a weekend with my wife, and the only show besides that, that weekend was WWE at the Tokyo Dome. Really? <laughs> yeah. They're there at funny. the same time, but uh, usually at Cork and Hall, there's matches almost every day of the week, sometimes two. Um, 
so getting to shoot in Japan there at uh, that show. And then also I went there again that same year in October for mm -hmm. a little bit longer, where I got to shoot at Cork and Hall uh, three times. Once How did for you get to, to that? Uh, through the magazine. Uh, that yeah. one, I didn't know that I had access until that day. I checked my email at the hotel. Mm -hmm. And so um, one of my wife's coworkers was Japanese. And when we went there, we actually stayed with her family for a week because uh, she was there at the same time. Mm -hmm. And she translated a note that Brandy from PWI wrote for me asking for ringside access. And so she translated into Japanese. And so I'd show uh, the promotion, hey, I got this. But for that one, I just I bought a ticket for the show first mm -hmm. and then went inside and I talked to the referee. Uh, I believe it's Ted Tanaby, who is uh, now passed away. Um, and so, so I brought a magazine with my photos in it. So I said, hey, I'm a photographer for this magazine. It was my photos. And so he p gave me back my money for my ticket. And oh. he gave me ringside access. That's really and interesting. So I saw ringside from there. Yeah. And. So my wife got to watch the show um, and she had no idea what was going on. It was, I think it was like her second actual wrestling show that she's ever at. Very and, bizarre. Comparatively. Yeah. You know, she can't understand what's going on with the, whatever. There's one moment where they're telling everybody to get out of the way and <laughs> she didn't know what they were saying. Um, but then the photos from that show uh, appeared in PWI for their uh, arena reports in the back of uh, the magazine where they'll have a spotlight card. And I think that was the first time uh, photos from Japan were used for that one. And then when I went back the second time, uh, they used a bunch of my photos from Pro Wrestling Noah, which Brandy had a contact through um, Harley Race's camp, mm -hmm. which they had a good relationship with Pro Wrestling Noah. So she sent me that email saying I was good to go for that show. And I just checked it that morning at the, ho at the hotel and said, Oh, Hey, I'm going to Noah. Yeah. <laughs> and shooting ringside there. So that was a pretty crazy match uh, or card. Cause it was Kenta versus Kenta Kobashi was one of the oh. uh, main events there. I wow. think that was part of the seven trials of Kenta. And I okay. had no idea who they were. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty bizarre so, to even be able to go, but then to not yeah. know who they are. That's hilarious. Uh, I didn't know, you know, the what, who Kenta was at the time. Yeah, or that whole trial, seven trials of Kenta. And it was a pretty hard-hitting match. And two of my photos from that match got published for their uh, 500, PWI 500 that year. Uh, Mitsuhiro Masawa, I believe, was the champion at the time, was in a six-man tag team in, in the main event. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my photos of him got published there. And also I met uh, Mike Modest and Donovan oh. Morgan. So I was hanging out where the photographers hang out outside the locker room. Mm -hmm. And they came out and I hey, said hi to them and got some photos of them backstage. And then uh, I also shot at Zero One, which Brandy was able uh -huh. to set that up through Steve Carino because she was good friends with Steve Carino. And I shot two Zero One shows there, both at Cork and Hall. Mm -hmm. The first show, he wasn't there, but I, you know, got in with my uh, thing, my letter. And then they were there the next week, him and uh, Brian Kendrick, who okay. uh, was Spanky Leonardo there in Pro <laughs> Noah. That was probably one of his to... first trips there then. Uh, possibly, yeah. And so I got to sit down with Steve Carino before the event to meet with him. So that's pretty cool because we're about the same age and he grew up in Winnipeg, I believe, or uh but yeah he was you know watched awa growing up just like i did mm -hmm. so we had that connection yep so if you had to give advice oh, to yeah. new beginner sports photographers pro wrestling photographers what advice would you give what are like the essentials to get going mm -hmm. oh boy um wow um Network, you know, make connections with the wrestlers because that way you can network to the promoters. Uh, so get to know the wrestlers. Um, mm -hmm. And if you want to go shoot this show they, and there's a wrestler going to that show, maybe you can ride with them uh, and they can talk to the promoter to get you there uh, and to access there. 
Um, learn how to use your camera. Hmm. It, it sounds simple, but learn how to use your camera. If if you could put it to a five year old, how would you do it? Because I have a nice camera, but I don't know how to use it. Exactly. You got to know what the settings are. You know your shutter speed, your f stop. Know what those do. I know the word uh, ISO, but I don't know what that means. <laughs> ISO actually. Uh, I figure what that stands for, but it's your. It, it basically means sh the film speed. So they kept that through with uh, digital. Uh, the faster or the, the higher the number, the uh, better you can take in uh, so it's action, like action shots. Shot. Yeah. So what should it be? So at? like Is back when I was number? shooting film, I'd use 800 speed, not 400 okay. speed. Yeah. So in, in lower light, you can bump up the ISO. A lot of photographers will do that mm -hmm. to make it so they can get a better shot in the lower light. So hmm. those, those, are, those are your three uh, controls, really. The, the shutter speed, f-stop, ISO that you should learn how to use. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So networking, yep. learn your camera, mm -hmm. and probably don't be a dumbass. But, <laughs> yeah. Stay out of the way. That's pro wrestling. Yes, yeah, stay, <laughs> stay out of the way. Yes, that's very important. Uh, know where the wrestlers are going. You, you got to have a feel for the action and what's going to happen. You know, if you're mm -hmm. shooting any other sports, boxing, baseball, football, you should be familiar with the sport uh, to know what, what's going to happen. And it's kind of easier with wrestling. You got a good feel of what's, you know, what moves maybe come next, where they're going to go. Um, yeah. But also, yeah, stay, stay out of the way. <laughs> Don't get hit. Um, don't be in the way when a wrestler is coming by. That that seems like very solid and advice. I, that, that's the basic advice that WWE gave me when I was at ringside. Don't get in the way. Yeah, I, I don't think anyone no. can ask for much more. If you do that, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. Know where the action's going and don't pay attention to what's going on. Mm -hmm. I remember, I think one of the first few Ring of Honor shows I did there in St. Paul at the Armory when they were there, um, uh, one of my friends said, man, your head was just turning everywhere because it was like a six-man scramble match, and so there's action all over the place. So that's why I don't like doing battle royals, really. No one does. there's just bodies <laughs> flying all over. Yeah, wrestlers as well, yeah. Because uh, there's just bodies flying everywhere. So it's it's hard to, you know, something might be happening behind you, but you're looking over here. And mm -hmm. You want to know what's going on and... Make sure you're in a safe place, safe for you and the wrestlers. Yeah. So usually the corners are probably the better spots in general. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And that way also uh, another thing is stay out of the fans way as well. You know, don't just be standing there the whole time with your camera down at your uh, waist level and just watching the action, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Get caught sleeping um, on the job. Yeah. Uh, I, I usually tend to try to uh, lean down on the ring shoot through mm -hmm. the uh, bottom and the middle row instead of standing mm -hmm. up because fans That's don't clever. like when they're there ringside and all they see is the photographer standing in front of them. Yeah. That wouldn't be fun. I would imagine mm -hmm. that would yeah, be very they paid frustrating. for that seat. So you try to stay out of the way of the fans, the wrestlers. And most of the tears usually are kind of cut that way as well. So that way they don't get stuck behind the corner poster, whatever mm -hmm. else would be there. The yeah. giant magnetic things that they have nowadays. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, I'd slide to the middle to get a shot and then slide back to the corner. Kind so. of just timing. Mm -hmm. Very yeah, smart. so get, you know, go there, get get a shot, and then move out of the way. Because you don't need to sit there the whole time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other lasting words you want to leave us with? Oh, it's been fun. Yeah. I, I feel like I learned a lot more than I expected for some reason. Uh -huh. Like, I'm, I'm not a photographer, but I I want to be involved in like every asset or every facet you of You did pro some wrestling. video work. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Yep. It was I, funny. I, at one heavy on wrestling show, a video photographer was that, there uh, helping out, and then she got called up for a match. I remember was, that one. I yeah. was there for that too. Uh huh. Yeah. So all of a sudden I look at where, where'd she go? Oh, she's coming out for the next match. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never really can get. Too lucky in pro wrestling, I guess. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 
Well, that's the thing with uh, new wrestlers. Uh, you go to a show there to help out, maybe set up the ring, help out in any other way you can, and that that gets you noticed. I feel like that's kind of like an underappreciated art of the indies. It's not like you're going to have that happen on WWE television, but on the independent mm-hmm. level, this is how opportunities kind of come together. Yeah. Hey, did you have any other photos there picked out? No, I wanted no? to grab a. Actually, you know what? I have one, but I don't know if I can actually show it to you. Maybe oh. I can, oh no, I can, but this isn't it. Yeah, I it was. It was a funky one of CM Punk I liked, but actually I got it right here. Hold on, let me see, because I I spent a lot of time because I was like I want to know what Wayne had for breakfast that day. That's how much <laughs> detail I wanted to do. And a rock because, star. Yeah, <laughs> I had a monster. Ah. I want to see. Um, let me go like that. Because it's someone who's pretty famous. Um, I've never met them, but he did respond to me on Twitter one time when I asked how to watch Crank Inkers. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Oh, okay. Yeah. But we got, uh, oh, how can I make this big? Oh, you David like Arquette? That, sure. David Arquette. Yeah, that was right after his match. Was right it backstage? Yeah, that was right on the stage there, right after his match. I think he had to do another one because he didn't like how his hair looked there. But it looks good. So, it looks yeah, like a wrestler. <laughs> uh huh. Yes, he does. Yeah, he did. He did a fine job in that match. I feel like he did way better than anyone expected him to, and then he just mm-hmm. disappeared and was happy with what he did. Uh, I think he just wanted his time in the ring and to make that movie. Yeah. Have you watched the uh, You Can't Kill David Arquette? Is it free on Amazon Prime? No, it's free on... Um, well, it might be on Amazon Prime. I don't have that, but... What did I watch it on? Because I wanted Hulu? to watch it with Kimber. If you, if you have a, a Roku, it. if you have a Roku or something like that, you can just you know search for it. I have a smart TV and Google. So, yeah, it search for it. In, but I watched it for free on maybe Hulu. Okay, because... His story and like the whole Nick Gage thing that kind of like brought attention back to the indies almost where it wasn't getting it. Yeah, oh, time, definitely. It felt like, which is yeah, really that got national exposure. Yeah, yeah. It, and then they talked about that in the Dark Side of the Ring mm-hmm. where they talked about Nick Gage, and he's like, Yeah, I really shouldn't have been there. <laughs> he should have just been in. Excuse me, in a match with Colt Cabana at our First Avenue. <laughs> yep, exactly. That's where, that, he should, that's where he belonged there. In a match like that where a veteran like Colt could easily carry him through that. Yeah, yeah. especially with, like, the stakes, I guess is the best way to put it, the, the potential threat there. Mm-hmm. And not, I don't know. I don't know what happened, and I don't really want to know. I kind of like the mystery there. But... It brought a lot of attention, and it might have even started a whole lot of the dark side of the ring ideas, maybe even, I feel it like. It could have been, yeah. It, I don't know how soon before or after that happened, the dark side of the ring stuff came out, but dark side of the ring for pro wrestling is kind of like drum, like melodramas for your girlfriends to watch with you. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? That was their intent, yeah. yeah. For not just wrestling fans to watch it, but anybody could watch it and be engaged in the stories that are being told. Yeah. It's about, it's about the people involved, the characters, and then pro wrestling happens to be the background, the background, the backdrop. Mm -hmm. I think that is when pro wrestling is done best. Yeah. Well, thank you, Wayne. You gave me two hours. I'm going to have to go through and make sure that um, we got everything because this was a blast and I'm, I'm fatigued with like, learning it's like when you go to a seminar and you're there for three hours two hours and you're like so much happened i need to go back and refresh and make sure i didn't forget oh well, you took notes right oh yeah for sure right here yeah because <laughs> i know you've taken notes there at uh, other seminars i do i'm a note taker i have to yep. be or else i forget thank uh-huh. you for noticing that actually that's very interesting <laughs> i were you at the quack one yeah of course yep i think i saw yeah. you with your notebook out there yeah mm-hmm Yep. Especially with someone as knowledgeable. Oh, yes. Well, Wayne, I'm going to have to get you back on, and maybe if I can find you in person at some of these shows as a fan, maybe I'll come sit by you or right come, on. come do some pictures, maybe. 
<laughs> well, we, we can take out our phones and take some shots. Yeah, for sure. Some selfies. <laughs> well, thank you so right much, on. Wayne. All right. Well, thank you for having me. I'll see you around, okay? Stay right safe. on. Take care. Bye. See ya. Thank you, Wayne McCarty. You can find him at Wayne McCarty on Instagram and on Twitter. Thank you, guys.